Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Who's for it? Don't ask that in difficult. Just wanted to ask you a little bit. Your wife, is she pregnant now with her baby? No, we've, uh, he arrived uh, three months ago. Yeah, another baby boy. So it's three boys now what under is, five. And what are the names? Uh, uh, Cameron is the five-year-old. Elliot is the three-year-old. And Isaac is the baby. Isaac? Isaac, what yeah. What a way to learn that you were going to be a dad again. I know, on Skype. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous? It's hilarious. But then this, 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 the hard thing then was not seeing him for three months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And she was, you know, because that first three months is a minefield. And I couldn't put my arms on her mother. And she had the two babies there as well. So uh, I was popular when I got back. <laughs> I had to come laden down with presents. I'm going to head off. Okay. Um, so yeah, so he's here. Uh, Hail and hearty, thanks be to God. Pete was at the house and home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the good wife, was it such a relief when you got that part? Because obviously it seems in America once you get one sort of big part. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's. That's the plan, you know, that hopefully it'll lead to something else. I mean, I shot that last August, you know, and we are broadcasting states in October. Mm. And what kind of blew... I knew... I, I had never seen the show. It was my wife's favourite show. Yeah, and, uh, and it literally happened overnight. I got a call on a Wednesday afternoon from my manager in New York, and I was literally flying the following morning. I knew nothing about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lisa was delighted because it's her favourite show. Mm-hmm. And she actually sat me down and showed me an episode before oh, I went. Good. So he sleeps with her, and then she can, they work for the site because I had no clue. Um, so it was it was a bit of a roller coaster thing for the nine days. And then when it aired in the states, twenty one million people watched the episode. I thought 20, I couldn't compute that. It's four or five times the population of the country. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, hopefully it'll lead to something else. As I said, the producers have said these characters come in and out all the time, so, and we won the case, so. So good, positive. Oh, good, yeah, yeah, yeah hopefully. Are you doing more auditions over there for other stuff as well? Taping stuff all the time, yeah, but it's, it's the way kind of our game has gone now in the last couple of years. It's all self taping now, which is great for us because it means we don't have to be in a room in LA anymore, or even in London or in Belfast. We can tape for stuff, and I had never. I never really had much faith in the self tape and things. I like to be in a room with somebody and shake their hand and you know, get a bit of eye contact and talk about the parts. But um, yeah, I'd be taping, you're taping stuff almost every week now for the States, you know, particularly through pilot season. You could be doing two or three a week. Um, but it's constantly doing stuff now for the States, auditioning, so I haven't got that yet. <laughs> but we're working on it. <laughs> and how did Touch go as well? Touch was great. Yeah. Touch was. Uh, again surreal you know it was such a brilliant script that pilot episode um, and I know that they had plans for myself and uh, Karen David who was the girl who played opposite me for our characters to come back towards the end of season one so they're now thinking about season two because it's just been picked up thankfully for a second season so yeah that was amazing as well we shot that in LA um, that again. sounds like uh, what's the of the night I never met him oh really it's one of those bizarre anomalies of television. Do you know what I mean? You're in the show with. I never met the man, even though, and he's an executive producer on the show. But we were, we shot for three days our scenes. You know, yeah. he wasn't there, so never met him. I believe he's lovely. <laughs> he was a lovely man. <laughs> Very fond of Ireland too. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I spoke to Amy last week. You know, it's that's the business, and she's she's as aware of that as anybody else you know it's just unfortunate the way it gets headlined and it gets dealt with that she was dumped you know what I mean that's the business that's why that's why networks do pilots so that when it goes to pick up and goes to series they know they've got everything right Um, and you know obviously the job wasn't right for her but I've known Amy for a while and it won't be long before she's on back on US television because she's she's a stunning girl a nicer woman you couldn't meet and she's a brilliant actress she's a great comedian they'll be snapping her up over there I guess it was especially hard for her when she was the only person on the show that wasn't taken through yeah but it's all you know she said herself she went out to LA and was on an agency hunt you know and happened to get called for an audition and got us you know she's no fool she knows LA is not as easy as that um, George Clooney did 17 pilots before ER was picked up and that's set as an actor that's 17 times you go for an audition you get the part you tape the show and the show doesn't get picked up yet you have to he picked himself up 17 times he's now into his 40s and he does a pilot called ER and the rest is history I think he's miserable now though but, you know, I mean it's all gone completely pear shaped for him since then but uh that's just the nature of the business. I mean, I know myself, you you know, dealing with no, the word no, it's a reality of our game. I mean, I hear it twice a week, you know, when you're going for different parts of 
you get very close. It's it's gut wrenching, but you got to get up the following morning and go and do the next one. So she'll be grand. Amy will be grand. I guess that's the reality for anyone looking to break into America. You have to have that thick skin. It's, I mean, breaking into America. I mean, it's 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 the long it's a long long road. I mean, just from a, a physical fact of things that you need to do, you need to have an agent, you need to get a manager, and that sounds very glib. Getting an agent and a manager is not easy, and then you got to get a lawyer, you got to get the visa sorted. You're looking at two years, you know, and a lot of money because what people don't realise as well is that you're going over there on your own book. Nobody's bringing you out there, you know, and you can't just get off the plane and go, "Hello, Hollywood, here I am." The answer to all your problems, yeah. Um, and of course then you go to the bottom of a pile over there you're just another actor so you got to go and do the rounds you got to meet all the casting directors and, and they love a meeting in LA everybody will meet you they all won't give you work but they'll meet you and particularly if you're Irish oh yeah sure we meet them but uh, it's a long road but we're, we'll get there we'll get there has being Irish helped then over there? it's certainly not a disadvantage yeah. you know I mean just being different you know um, and also it can go against you though I mean Strangely, the, the touch obviously I played an Irish character, and the good wife played English, yeah. so I've yet to play American. I've been cast in a movie over there, which is due to shoot at the end of this year called Living Impaired, which is with Bo Bridges and Julia Ormond, and I'm playing American, and that's living. called Living Impaired. Living. It's about um, it's about a family dealing with the death of their father. It's comedy actually, but there you go. <laughs> um, so I'll be playing American, and that that'll be the first time I'll be playing American over there. And you know, you think you have a good American accent over here, and I've done a lot of theatre stuff over here where you're playing American, and you think, ah, oh, it's great. But then you go over there and you think, no. <laughs> you have to get your dialogue coach. You know, I need a, you need a dialogue coach to help you prep for auditions. And it's, uh, but it still beats working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not by much, but it's a little bit. Exactly. Back in two minutes, okay? Well, best of luck, thank you. You're very welcome. You Patrick, see, so hope you get Please, God. Yeah, Amy was the way it was dealt with. I think it was more because it was such a big, like a big deal that she got accepted over there, and, then and it was suddenly, her first audition in this place, yeah. and she got the lead. Especially if you don't know how these things work over there. And I'd actually, I'd actually auditioned for it. Read that script. Great script, set in a veterinary practice for animal kingdom. Great script, very funny. I auditioned for one of the other parts. Obviously, not for him. It's an operation. <laughs> But when I found her, then she got the part. I thought she's perfect. Was it rather than yeah, good fit. But Swear the networks get involved, and they want to talk about you know you working with. There's a million, a myriad of things that you're not privy to. And just because you've got the job and got the pilot, you ain't there yet. Until you sign that deal for five or seven years. Well, um, it won't be long for both of you. Please, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can be starring no, together. <laughs> we should do a show together, me and him. You can eat Deku the Roots when you go. I have your rosary to the car. There the you go. I'll do P.O. <laughs> you can tell Drew who you're taking the flight. Jesus. It's great chatting to you anyway. Thank you. 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 Thank